This is just a quick follow-up to the last video. The test tubes that contain various dilutions of uh, quinine alkaloid and have been treated with Dragendorf reagent have now been settling for a couple of days. As you can see, the four test tubes on the right, those with the higher concentrations of quinine, all have distinct precipitates. What's interesting is that the second test tube from the left, the five parts per million quinine solution, uh, originally appeared clear with just a slight color change, it now also has a noticeable precipitate at the bottom of the tube. And of course the test tube on the far left contained only water and shows no precipitate whatsoever with the Dragendorf reagent. I ended up going back and making even smaller dilutions of the quinine solution and what I found out is that by allowing the quinine to react with the Dragendorf reagent for a matter of hours to a day or two, uh, I could get down to positive results at the sub one part per million level, in other words, the parts per billion level. So Dragendorf's is indeed a very effective reagent for determining the presence of alkaloids, or at least quinine. I'm Robert Bruce Thompson and this is the Home Scientist video series. In this segment we'll look at another aspect of forensic toxicology determining salicylate concentrations. Aspirin, or acetylsalicylic acid, is the most familiar form of salicylate, but other forms are used in pain relievers, including sodium salicylate and methyl salicylate. The latter is a common ingredient in Bengay and other topical analgesics, giving them their wintergreen odor. Salicylates are effective and relatively safe pain relievers when used as directed, but in larger doses they can be lethal. This was brought home forcefully three years ago when 17-year-old Ariel Newman, a high school cross-country runner, died after she used an excessive amount of a methyl salicylate muscle cream. Salicylates are seldom the culprit in forensic poisoning cases simply because a lethal dose is rather large and difficult to administer surreptitiously. Still, murders by salicylate poisoning do occur from time to time. Aspirin rapidly metabolizes in the body to form salicylate ions. The therapeutic range is 10 to 20 milligrams per deciliter of blood serum. Salicylate toxicity may appear at levels below 30 milligrams per deciliter and is usually evident at levels higher than 40 milligrams per deciliter. Extreme salicylate toxicity occurs at serum levels around 60 mg per deciliter for chronic overdoses and 100 mg per deciliter for acute overdoses. The adult human body typically contains 50 to 60 deciliters of blood, so acute salicylate toxicity sometimes occurs after consuming only half a dozen 500 mg aspirin tablets over a period of a few hours. Small children with their lower body mass and blood volume may exhibit acute toxicity after swallowing only one or two 500 mg aspirin tablets. Although aspirin and most salicylate compounds are colorless, salicylate ions form an intense violet complex with iron-3 ions. In this session, we'll use that fact by making up solutions of various known concentrations of salicylate ions reacting those solutions with iron-3 ions and visually comparing the intensity of the color produced against a similarly prepared specimen with an unknown concentration of salicylate ions. By comparing the intensity of the violet color of the questioned specimen to the knowns, we can estimate the salicylate concentration of the questioned specimen quite closely. Because it's readily available, we'll use aspirin as our source of salicylate ions. In aqueous solution, aspirin gradually hydrolyzes to acetic acid and salicylic acid, a process that's greatly accelerated by heat or an acid or base catalyst. We'll kill two birds with one stone by using sodium hydroxide to increase the hydrolysis rate. Sodium hydroxide also reacts with the acids to form sodium acetate and sodium salicylate, both of which, unlike aspirin or salicylic acid, are extremely soluble in water. I've made up a salicylate standard by dissolving three 325 milligram aspirin tablets for a total of 975 milligrams and about a gram of sodium hydroxide in water and making up the solution to 100 milliliters. However, salicylate comprises only 76.11% of aspirin by mass, so our solution actually contains about 742 milligrams per deciliter of salicylate ions. Okay, I've made up the salicylate standard. The tube on the right contains 150 milligrams of salicylate ion per deciliter, and then I've done a serial dilution by halves. So here we have salicylate at 75 milligrams per deciliter, 37.5 milligrams per deciliter, 
about 19 milligrams per deciliter and about nine and a half milligrams per deciliter. Now these tubes on the right, uh, 150, 75, and 37 and a half, are all toxic levels of salicylate ion. Uh, for example, at 150 milligrams per deciliter, you have an emergency situation where they would use kidney dialysis, and the same at 75 milligrams per deciliter. So let's introduce our test reagent, and I am using 0.1 molar ferric nitrate solution, iron 3 nitrate. And we can see we get an extremely intense color reaction at 75 milligrams per deciliter. Once again, we get an extremely intense reaction. And at 37 and one half. Intense, not quite as intense as at 75. And one milliliter. And at about 19, we still get a very intense purplish color. And at about nine and a half, you can probably see on camera, the purple color is still intense, but much less intense. And finally, our control tube, which contains distilled water. And we get only the very pale yellow color of the iron 3 nitrate solution. I'll remove this paper towel and see if perhaps we can see more difference in the coloration by looking directly through. And we can. Now, these right two test tubes apparently contain sufficient hydroxide ion that we're actually getting a um, uh, iron hydroxide precipitate, which causes the brownish coloration as opposed to the purplish that you can see in these other tubes. All right, I'm going to remove the control tube from the rack and replace it with another tube that contains 10 milliliters of urine. I obtained this specimen uh, two hours after taking two 500 milligram aspirin tablets. Now ordinarily, of course, urine is uh, ranges from color from pale yellow to a rather intense yellow, and that might interfere with the test. So I added some activated charcoal to the urine specimen and agitated it and allowed it to sit. The activated charcoal absorbs molecular species such as urea and the other major solutes in urine leaving the uh, ionic species, such as the salicylate ion, pretty much untouched. So, let's add one milliliter of iron 3 nitrate. And, as we can see, we get a definite positive reaction for salicylates. It appears to be about mid-range between the specimen at 9.5 milligrams per deciliter on the left now and 19 milligrams per deciliter, although perhaps closer to 19. So I'm going to estimate the concentration in that urine specimen as being about 15 or 16 milligrams per deciliter, which is well within the therapeutic range. This ends part one of this segment. In part two, we'll test a topical analgesic cream to determine its salicylate concentration and see how closely it matches the label. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. Excessive amount of a methyl salicylate muscle crumb. Muscle crumb?